Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, the Glory Room. I'm Prophetess Lou. Hope you all are having a blessed day. Before we get started, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for loving us and taking care of us. Most of all, we thank you for saving our soul. Father God, we ask you to pour out your wisdom and knowledge into us. We ask you to bless the ones that are reading it and bless the ones that are hearing it. Father God, we ask you to help us apply this word to our life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So the verse today is James 4, 17. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it for him, it is a sin. Subject, the weight of wisdom. Christian truths, I'm going to say it and pause on each one. to give you an opportunity to say it if you like. I'm learning. I'm needing God. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we don't know everything. I can say I try to know as much as I can. And I try to understand things I don't because I don't like to be in the unknown. I don't like to ask for help either. I rather do it. I rather struggle to do it and learn through it and then to depend on anyone. But as I'm growing in God, I realize that I need him. If I don't need anyone else, I don't ask for help from anyone else. I ask him. I realize that on this journey in God, that as much as we can say that we know this story and that story, we still don't fully know the stories in the Bible, because in one day we can read a chapter, come back two months later and obtain something else. The reason to this is because we, as we grow in God, our perspective will change and cause us to see things differently. God doesn't mind the questions. God doesn't mind us lacking. Still, he wants us to seek him to know. Every day I, I pray and ask God to give me wisdom and knowledge, to give me what I'm lacking, because I don't want to be in a time in my life that I don't know. When the Bible verse tells us that for us to know the right thing and fail to do it, we fail ourselves, and it's a sin. Sure, there's a lot in the Bible we don't know, but the thing we do know, we should avoid doing them. So we won't ever be placed in this category to know and still do the opposite. When I was a child, my mom told me the stove was hot. She said, I still wanted to touch the stove. She said, one day I touched it, and she said, I realized then that the part I was touching was very warm. But I knew I should have touched it. What could she do? I didn't get burned, but what I felt, it was extremely warm because I wouldn't stop. This is just like our spiritual life. When God tells us to not do something and we still go out of our way to do it, knowing it's wrong, what do we expect to happen? We will get burnt by whatever he's telling us to let go of. What is God telling you to let go of? What do you know you shouldn't be doing and are still doing it? John 9 and 41, and Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you will have no guilt. But now that you say we see, your guilt remains. Jesus says this, that when you were blind, there were no guilt found in you. Still, now that you can see, your guilt remains because when we don't know, we can't be held accountable for anything. But when we study our word, when we learn that gossiping is wrong and saying cruel things is wrong, cussing is wrong, gluttony is wrong, when we learn these things, and we learn and know it and understand it. We are held count, held to a higher standard. It's not that we can say about our actions because we know what is now considered wrong. Even with speeding in certain areas. If it's not posted, how do we know this is the speed? When they take the time to post the speed, we can't say, I didn't know. When we know, we must respect the law of the land. Jesus was telling this guy, he said, he just gave sight to this very thing. He, We have to be careful with our knowledge. We have more more knowledge, more responsibility, less knowledge, few responsibilities. But as we open ourselves up to knowing more and we learn, we can't expect to be treated as someone that doesn't know. John 9 and 39, Jesus said, for judgment, I have come into the world so that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. Now that we know these things, do we do the right thing or do we continue to do the very thing we know we shouldn't? Whether we do it because we, it brings us comfort or we do it because it makes us feel good. Whatever the feel, reason may be, when we do it, we must understand that we have the free will to do what we like. But are we going to do the right thing and stay away from the things that bring sin into our lives and heart? Sin doesn't just happen, but it affects every part of our being. It affects our physical, emotional, and mental and spiritual. But we can't stop it from spreading in these areas of our life because it tells us in this Bible verse, James 1 and 1 15. Then after desire has conceived and it gives birth to sin and sin, when it's fully grown, gives birth to death. See, we don't see this with our natural eye. 
But we see this and understand this deeper once we understand how sin weighs in our lives. We have our desires and it gives birth to sin and sin when it's fully grown gives birth to spiritual death because sin can't conceive nothing but death and death causes us to have a bridge between God and us because we choose, we choose, we choose to give birth to something we could have just ignored or said no to. But a lot of times we refuse to say no to our ways and our wants, even if we know the damage it could do to us today. We learned that we are held accountable for our sins. When we know them, we are blind when we don't know. But the moment we read and the Holy Spirit brings it to our attention, we are fully aware and it's a sin. But we can't stay in the dark, stay in the dark about sin. We must learn everything we can about our walk with God so that we can please him. We can't please him with our own works, but by by faith and walking in the light today. If you're unsure about what you're doing, ask God to show you what you are doing wrong so that he can help you through whatever it is. We never want to remain blind. We want to see and walk in the light. Prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for everything. We ask you to help us accept the knowledge we know and not to do anything that will cause us to sin. Help us to be aware of what we're doing. We thank you for everything we, you have done. We thank you for love, for the love you give us every day. Lord, we want to know more of your word. Please guide us in the truth. Help us to stand on it. Lord, we ask that you go with us throughout our day and help us to be kind and treat others the way we want to be treated. Lord, we thank you. We are so grateful in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Reference. James 1, 14 and 15. But each person is tempted when he's lured and enticed by his own desires and desire when it has conceived, gives birth to sin and sin when it's fully grown brings forth death. Colossians 3, 5, and 6, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorities, purities, impurities, passions, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, but for our sake, if he, if he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the, the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians 5, and 21. Further reading, Proverbs 17. Isaiah 1, 2 Peter 4, and Colossians 3. This ends the weight of sin. I pray you all have a blessed day. Remember, Jesus loves you. I love you too. Remember to like, subscribe, and follow on any major platforms. Remember to share with a family member or friend. And remember, if you could, share on your social media. Thank you. Be blessed.